Welcome to FT Markets. The trouble in Greece is dominating the headlines, but underneath the European recovery is going quite smoothly. Discussing this with me today is Vincent Jouvan, Global Market Strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Welcome, Vincent. So let's have a look at the first chart which you brought uh, with you today, and that's showing that actually things are going quite well in Europe if it wasn't for this big Greek trouble. Indeed, we have seen that growth figure for the first quarter have been uh, much better uh, than what we have seen over the past quarter. 0.4 growth, person growth over the first quarter. And this is clearly uh, led by the ECB intervention. And a way to show it is that where ECB has an influence on, it's definitely on the money supply. And you see here the link, the correlation between the M1 monetary aggregate and GDP. So in a way, we can still expect uh, the European economy to grow in the coming quarters thanks to the interventions of uh, the ECB. We've also seen that all surprise indicators in terms of economic surprise published by Citigroup, for instance, have been quite robust uh, until the end of March. They've been reduced a bit uh, since the end of March on the back of a revaluation of inflation dynamic, on the back of the Greece story, obviously. Uh, so there's a better momentum at the moment, but it's which remain quite fragile. We've seen this morning that unemployment remain above 11 percent. So aside from Greece, reform continue to have to be implemented in Europe as well. We continue to need to give more flexibility to, job to, to the job market to make this recovery sustainable in the coming quarter. Now let's have a look at the second chart, which is trying to have a look at the stock market. And we see that uh, European stocks have done quite well. Now, obviously, this week this, there has been uh, some trouble on the stock market because of the uh, Greek um, standoff, but uh, so far so good. Yeah, so far so good. I must say it's conform of expectation. We're probably the first mover uh, uh, in terms of overweighting uh, Europe in our portfolio. At the, at the end of last year already we claimed that it was a, a good momentum or at least good performance, odd performance to expect from uh, European market. We have to acknowledge that it has been maybe too quick too far uh, during the first quarter and that we now have a kind of healthy correction. Uh, partly necessary from a valuation perspective and partly led uh, by the discussion around Greece. We believe that even from this level and even in the context of a worst case scenario of having a Brexit in the coming weeks, fundamentally speaking, uh, European markets remain uh, attractive. If you look at cyclically adjusted PE, we are below uh, average. If you look at uh, dividend uh, yields in Europe, you still can get 3 to 4 percent, which is way... Uh, and Brexit wouldn't really affect this? Well, the question that we have to, to ask ourselves is if Greece leaves the Europe uh, tomorrow, will unemployment increase in Europe? I do not think so. Will the Sanofi, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, all the big uh, high dividend payers uh, have to cut their dividend? I do not think so. It's 2% of the Eurozone GDP. Is it going to, be, uh, to generate huge damage to uh, the European economy? I do not think so. But we have to shift the focus from Greece to uh, reform again in Europe to stimulus measure. And the good thing is that they are coming. Uh, in the coming month, we will talk more about, about the so-called Junker plan, which is an investment plan of more than 300 billion euro in the European economy. And this will obviously generate growth and job. Now, a final question on your last chart, which is about the sectors. Now, so far, exporters have done quite well, but maybe the, co the companies which are more geared towards domestic consumptions will be coming next. We believe so. We have seen indeed that uh, export sector, export companies have been uh, the main benefiter from uh, uh, the low euro, obviously, that investors have bet on the fact that, they would, uh, that it would improve their revenue and their uh, margin, and it has been the case. We believe that we have now to shift to the more fundamental structural story that we see in Europe. Behind the good GDP figure of the first quarter, we have seen that domestic demand was by far one of the major uh, contributors to, uh, to the rise in GDP. We see that the ECB have managed to uh, um, make a financing condition in Europe uh, more easier. There is no pickup in uh, loan demand growth from uh, retail public or as from uh, companies. We see that uh, mortgage production, for instance, in countries like Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, is quite high. And this will be reflected in cyclical sectors like the financial sector. We believe also that sector more cyclically 
tilted like the consumer discretionary sector might benefit also by this rebound in consumption that we see. We've seen that retail sales have been pretty strong in Europe and indeed we now have to focus a little bit more also on this more endogenous uh, growth story in Europe. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Vincent. So Grexit continues to cast a shadow over European markets, but there are also some reasons for optimism for investors.